welcome to yet another edition, an enlightened edition of DXB Today. Thanks so much indeed for being with us here on Dubai One TV. With you through for the next 60 minutes. And what's our big focus today? Well, there are some that say this is the city that never sleeps. Is it conducive to sleep? How good is your sleep? How much of a pandemic is insomnia these days? All these questions and more. Let's see what's coming up on today's show. I went down to Taj Exotica on the Palm to check out their luxury spa, the J Wellness Circle, and try their holistic sleep therapy program. And we've got the talented singer Alicia Glantz closing the night with a very special track. Lots then for us to get our teeth into this evening. Yeah, we've got entertainment aplenty. We are marking a card for things to do around this city, but sleep is going to be the main conversation for us today. So how many of us do actually get enough sleep? How many know how much sleep we need? How many uh, feel that this city is conducive to uh, you getting the sleep that you need? Uh, do send in your thoughts as always. Uh, do so follow us on the socials and send us your thoughts there. Um, Ash, good sleeper? I used to be until I became a parent. I don't know if you can relate to this, Tom, but then I have disrupted sleep. I've had it for the last six years. That's about as old my daughter is. What about you, Lane? Um, I think you've got to be a bit selfish, really. Um, I, I mean, it does, it, like, <laughs> from person to person, it does change, and, and, and individually, it, some people need more than others. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting really strict now with sleep. I'm like, no, I've got to have this amount and that's it. I used to be able to survive and be okay with four, uh, but now I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing that anymore. I mean, there's so many excuses, aren't there, when it comes to sleep, you know, there's, there's that age old sort of thing. That a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'll rest at the weekend or whatever, and it's go, go, go. And there is, you know, there's no getting away from this is, this is a work hard, play hard city, but it's evolving, it's changing all the time. And it's all good and well to sort of rely on that as a little bit of an excuse. Unless you're focusing on number one, unless you're getting the sleep, the more research we're seeing that going in sleep and how important it is as part of the sort of overall wellness package is something that you really need to, uh, to invest in. So it's good to know that uh, at least one of us here on the sofa is investing in it, <laughs> or Mr. Selfish over there, yeah? Mr. Selfish. I am definitely him. Mr. Selfish, I'll take that on board. But we've got a lot more, not just from us, but we've got a wonderful guest co-host. Let's find out exactly who that is. Hello, my name's Julie Mallon. I'm the founder of Nurture to Sleep and co-presenter of Sleepless in Dubai, and can't wait to see you shortly. Julie will join us right here in just a little bit, but first I went down to the J Wellness Circle at Taj Exotica, the palm to try out the rejuvenating sleep therapy program for a truly blissful evening. Check it out. Did you know that good sleep is crucial for our overall health and well-being? So today at J Wellness Circle, I'm going to experience a signature therapeutic treatment specially designed to heal the body and enhance the mind. So Yoga, I'm very, very excited to be here today and to talk to you about something that is so important to everyone, right? Sleep. Sleep is one of those things that determines pretty much how the rest of your day is going to go. If we've had a bad night's sleep, it pretty much shadows the rest of your day. I don't know about you, but this happens yeah. to me for sure. To so how important is sleep in one's life? Sleep is a very essential part of a day-to-day -day life, right? Because nowadays, currently, we are so much busy and attached with the technology. A technology doesn't allow to relax our mind body and the spirit at the same time so when you go to sleep at the end of the night what do we need we peaceful sleep right when you hold this nidra sleep therapy which helps to relax our mind body very much so here at j wellness um, you have the mudra therapy which is the sleep therapy and with over 10 years of experience that you have in the field being a yogi and sound healing so on and so forth what inspired you to customize the sleep program Basically, Nidra is a holistic healing therapy which enables our sleep. The whole experience starts with the hot water shower and followed by the full body relaxing massage. And the unique thing is about this, there is a pressure point of your head and face because that relieves your maintenance and extension of your mind at the same time. 
the oil we use the is like aromatic oil is some Indian house like Keura, frankincense, and the Brahmi, which is very unique in their terms. Afterwards, they will give the relaxing massage. So that's the whole experience. Calm down and give a good, proper quality sleep. Fantastic! I'm looking forward to experiencing it. Yeah. Sleep is such a luxury and after that very relaxing yet invigorating treatment, all I'm looking forward to is a good night's rest later. Yeah, not sure what we've done wrong. Ash gets all the good gigs, doesn't she? Go to a five-star hotel on the palm and have a sleep. Yeah, nice. Don't be jealous, Tom. That was actually a lot of fun. It was so relaxing. In fact, I really struggled to drive back home after because <laughs> I was like snoozing and yawning. Check in. I don't know how I got home. It's, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, we are focusing on all things sleep and we have, um, uh, well, our guest co-host today is a leading sleep expert, no less, right here in the region, transforming the lives of individuals through what is a very personalized sleep coaching program developed by her supporting families globally on their journey uh, through her company. Please welcome to DXB today, uh, Julie Mallon from Nurture to Sleep. Julie, lovely to see you as always. Thank you. So, again, I, I suppose as we, as we just mentioned the sort of intro there, you know, sleep is one of those things. People like to make, like, uh, make a lot of excuses about their sleep. You know, they think they'll catch up with it at some point in life or some point in the week, etc. And I all too often hear the city being blamed for it. We live in a city that is the city that never sleeps. It's that work hard, play hard city as well. Is there a problem with sleep disorders in Dubai, in the region? Do we, is, this, is, this, is this an area that's conducive to good sleep? It can be, it absolutely can be. And we all have responsibility for that too. You know, we are living in a digital world where the world globally is on. It's not just Dubai, but we are also very, dark starved so light is a really big factor and light is one of the most critical components of good sleep be it for our children or our adults so we can still have good sleep this lighting for example is terrible for us <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad and it's the reason why it's so bad because the why is important so at the top of our eye there is a group of cells called the melanopsin cells and it's registering light above so that's why this is really not conducive. So in the evening, for example, if we can all expose ourselves, particularly our children, to dimmed light mm. that mimics the sunset and the sunrise, whichever, that's going to really support better I'm sleep. i to pick up on one word you said there, responsibility. Yeah. Is that key as well, that we are all responsible for our own sleep? We can't just blame somebody else for bad sleep. Um, we can't, but there's also, I mean, life gets in the way. And I think in Dubai, and I, there is so much pressure on everyone now, you know, generally there's both parents are now working. So, you know, from an economical perspective, yeah. that's a lot of pressure on parents, um, you know, wanting to go to the best schools and so on. There's a huge amount of pressure and that plays its toll yeah. on time spent together as family and um, also on food that we eat, food that we're providing, just sitting around a table. So. You know, I think what we've got to step away from is any kind of blame game. I think we've got to recognise, yes, we have to take responsibility, but I think we've all also got to be really supportive. Yeah. I like what you said there, Julie, because um, we can blame. I blame technology. Technology is a massive factor, I would say, but as you said, we can dim the light down a bit and, and, and try and step away uh, two hours before sleep and, and, and that sort of thing. But how much do you think technology plays a role into our sleep disorders? It's not just our sleep, it plays a huge role overall because it's also the content that we're consuming. So that plays a big part into impacting our sleep. Now, if we're looking at the screens and our devices, they're not all equal, just like sleep isn't equal over the night, over the night time. So for example, the TV screen has the least amount of blue light that it's emitting. The iPad has a higher intensity and of course the phone has the greatest blue light that it's emitting which then tricks the brain into thinking it's two o'clock in the afternoon as opposed to seven o'clock in the evening particularly for our children. So it has a huge impact 
But it, the thing that's important is, so if we're looking at, at our children as an example, but the same with the adults, but a little bit later. So the melatonin tap almost is released into our system, or we access it much more efficiently for our children, somewhere between six and 6.30. So we're looking at our biological clock and this biological clock stays with our children until they're about 10 and 11 years of age, until they hit puberty. So the tap comes on somewhere between 6 and 6.30 p.m., regardless of where they are in the world. And it's all to do with the sun setting. Now, if what precedes that two hours before bedtime, like for a screen, for example, we know that's going to completely disrupt that biological clock all the way until the morning. So. But there's things, again, that we can counteract. So, for example, the two places where you don't want to have low energy light bulbs, so LED lighting, is in the bathroom and the bedroom. Yeah. Because that's giving off the blue light, which is the same as looking at a screen. Mm. So we've just got to be mindful. Julie, we've been uh, blaming technology quite a bit, but let's talk about kids, okay? Yeah. It's not uncommon for uh, particularly new parents to experience um, disrupted sleep, especially when you've had a newborn. My daughter is about six and a half years old and I don't think I've still recovered. I used to be able to sleep like a log, but today if you ask me, even if I do have the option to have an uninterrupted full night's rest, I'm not able to. My body clock has completely changed and I still wake up by seven in the morning. Even if I don't physically get up from the bed, I'm awake by 6.30, 7 in the morning. How do I go back to the way things were? <laughs> um, well, I mean, what's really interesting here is that it used to be thought that as we age, and obviously I'm the eldest here, but as we age, our sleep declines, sleep quality declines. We now know that that's not quite true, which I think is very exciting in that if we are healthy, because all the research before was that clinically we are sleep declines, but that is now not the case if we are healthy. Your sleep has definitely changed um, from a hormonal perspective. So these changes are normal, but we're looking at sleep quality, not just quantity. Now your biological clock, like the sunrise, is due to start somewhere around 6, 6.30. So it is about getting to sleep early and the old wives tale of you know, that one hour before is worth three hours. That, from a research perspective, that's not too far wrong. Yeah. So it's about getting to bed early. <laughs> that's something I struggle with because I, I'm an evening person and especially once I've put the little one to bed, that is my time and that's when my time starts. I like to watch something and relax and I feel like going to bed early just takes away from that me time. <laughs> okay, this is really interesting because now with the Gen Z, what they're saying, there was a very interesting piece of research recently saying that the Gen Z, large numbers of Gen Z are going to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock p.m what's going on here but they are seeing that it really is having such a positive impact on their cognitive function and um, on their mental health because mental health is really huge now bank balance <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you can you know you've got seven nights a week where you can start those baby steps of going to bed early which is not horribly early i mean 11 o'clock that's yeah, not too that's early yeah. you can do that twice a week and then gradually increase it and we know the first half of your sleep is all about releasing that human growth hormone. So that's deep restorative sleep. And then the second half is all about emotional processing. So if you are going to bed too late, then you're robbing your body of something really critical of that deep, deep sleep. And equally, if you're getting up too early, then you're also robbing your body of that rapid eye movement sleep which is that emotional processing. There's um, a professor from UCLA and his re research was showing us that when we have four hours sleep a night or less, our anti-cancerous cells drop by 70% on that night. So this is science-based. This isn't, you know, I want some of my time. Yeah. You, we also want to live our lives. Mm. And in terms of longevity, Sleep's going to be your best therapy. I couldn't agree more. This is one of the best subjects that we've had on the show, actually. Yes. Um, please stick around, Julie. We're gonna we're gonna chat to you a little bit more a bit later. Thank um, you. But for now, coming up, we find out the best gadgets that help to improve our circadian rhythm. Plus, we've got music in the studio, so do not go anywhere.